All right, so I wanted to go over quickly um, the Western blot that you guys generated as part of Lab 9. Um, and so your last homework assignment for the lab is to analyze your Western blot. So re remember that you don't have to print out a copy of it. You just need to fill in the um, three homework questions on page 8 of the lab packet. So I'm going to go through kind of each question and walk you through what you should be looking at because sometimes it's confusing to... Um, to analyze them if you haven't seen these before. So here is your western blot. Um, what you're looking at is a dual color western blot. So you're seeing stains in red, which is showing um, your revert total protein stain. So these are showing, the red is gonna be showing all the proteins on the blot. And then the green is going to be showing your FITC anti-GST antibody. So remember we use direct amino detection to detect only the GST um, in the um, sample. So uh, your ladder, uh, your gel was run with a ladder um, <clears throat> that you can see here, and then uh, this is in a different orientation, but you might have run them differently. But you should have a lysis sample, which looks like a kind of a smear of proteins, and then you should have your pull down sample. So this is your pellet sample where you um, purified your GST protein and you eluted them off of the agarose, the glutathione agarose beads, um, and so what you're looking at is the difference between the lysis and the pull-down sample. So question I want to ask you in your gel, what is the difference do you see? And so um, <clears throat> I want you to focus on a, a few main differences. So obviously in the lysis sample, what you're seeing is the entire protein content of that entire bacterial lysis. So this was the sample that you saved from your initial sonication of the bacteria. So in the lysis, you're seeing every single protein in that bacteria. Now, you, you, because there's so many proteins, they look really fuzzy because there's a lot of proteins that kind of overlap um, and you don't see very any clear distinct bands but that's okay you see all the proteins um, and the bacterium um, they have various sizes of course and that's in the red channel so the red channel the revert total protein stain is showing you all the proteins and the green channel is showing you the antibody detecting GST so what you see is a green band because uh, obviously in that those bacteria they were making GST so you're going to see GST in that um, protein lysate so this is kind of the, the benefit of a western blot is is in a total protein lysate when you have you know thousands and thousands of proteins that are on this gel that look very fuzzy and non-distinct you can use a protein specific antibody to detect a single protein in that lysate so that's your lysis and then in your pull down sample I want you to focus on essentially two two properties. One, you should see hardly any protein in your sample except for just the GST that you isolated. Now you may see some other proteins and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. So obviously one main difference that you should see between the two samples is that there is much much less protein, hardly any at all of course, in your pull down sample because you are only isolating the specific GST protein. So compared to your lysis, there's a lot less protein. There isn't all these other protein bands that you see. What you'll also notice is the GST band is significantly bigger. And so one thing about what happens when you pull down a sample, when you isolate a sample through affinity chromatography, not only do you purify it from the lysis, but you also enrich it. So you get a lot more protein um, in that sample compared to uh, the lysis sample. So you should see very large amounts of that GST band. So those are the two main differences that I want you to kind of focus on um, for question number one. Okay, question number two asks, do you see any other protein bands in your pull-down sample? If so, why do you think that is? And so um, what happens is you're incubating this lysate with agarose, um, glutathione agarose beads. And they have the substrate for GST on them, so they should bind specifically to GST. And you should be able to purify, ideally, GST by itself uh, without any of these other protein bands. Um, but the problem is um, agarose is a, is a polysaccharide essentially and so, what ha and so what happens is other proteins can stick to these agarose beads non-specifically. Right? So um, this is why if you remember the protocol for this pull down, you incubated this for about 45 minutes on a rotator and then you washed it. Uh, I believe we washed it one time. We washed the beads. So you pelleted the beads, you removed the supernatant, you added some more buffer Pelleted them, pelleted them again and removed that supernatant. And the, and the goal for washing is to get rid of any proteins that are binding non-specifically. So we call, um, you can see the large band down here and you can see some faint bands up here. We call this background. And what we mean by background is just proteins that bind non-specifically to the agarose beads. So if you do see proteins 
in your pull down sample that are red, but they are not green, that tells you that these are background bands and they non specifically bound to the agarose. And that's why you see that. Um, and the things that you could do to get rid of this is ideally in a full protocol for a pull down like this, um, we wouldn't generally wash one time. We would wash possibly three to five times. And if you do that, if you wash a few more times, you would get rid of a lot of this background and have a very pure, pure sample. So if you do see bands, and then my guess is all of you might see this lower band, because we're not sure why this, this really prominent band is sticking to the beads, but it is, um, say yes, and, and well, all you need to explain is what background is, and just say that these, ba these bands are binding non-specifically to the agarose um, beads, and that more washing would get rid of that. All right, and the last question is um, basically what is the estimated size of GST protein based on your protein standard? So obviously you could, of course, just go to Wikipedia and look up the size of GST. GST is 27 kilodaltons, but I want to make sure you understand how to use a protein standard or a ladder to estimate that on your own without knowing the size ahead of time. And so here's our ladder. This is um, shown to you on page, uh, let me look through here in my packet real quick, page 7. And this is a pre-stained protein ladder, and what's hard about this is the colors are different now. It was pre-stained uh, different colors in our gel, but when we use the revert total protein stain, which stains all proteins, including the ladder, um, everything shows up red. And you'll notice that this is going to be difficult for this gel because we actually have a bubble. And this is what a bubble looks like during that blotting procedure. Um, and the bubble can create kind of artifacts, so it makes your gel a little bit harder to read. But we can still analyze this gel using this ladder. So what you want to do is look at your ladder and figure out where these bands correspond to the ladder. And so my uh, recommendation is to always start at the top because sometimes you won't see the bottom 10 um, kilodalton band. So sometimes you think that this might be the 10 kilodalton band when it's not, if you try to count upward. So just draw lines across. So this is the, uh, the very top band you see there is 180. Uh, this next band is 130 kilodaltons. Next one's 100. Now if you have a bubble in your ladder like this, this is going to be tricky. You kind of have to estimate. And so the 70 KD, there's a band that kind of is faint right here. I'm going to call that the 70. The 55 is this kind of band in the middle that you can see uh, that's really weird. The 40 is actually this band that's kind of angled down. But you can kind of see these three bands. So you know at least that these correspond to the 70, 55, and 40. Next is the 35 kilodalton band, the 25 kilodalton band, and then, whoops, sorry, the very last band we see is this 15 kilodalton band here. So. The GST band, because the pull-down band is so big, you actually don't want to use this one as your size estimate because, because there's so much protein, it's actually spanning this, the distance of roughly 10 kilodaltons on a gel. So you can't really get an accurate size. But you can use the lysis band as your kind of good estimate because it's a very nice thin band that's pretty distinct. And so if you draw a line, um, and I'll try and draw this with my mouse, although it might not be um, the most easy. Whoops. Nope. But you draw a line like that. Um, that line is in red, so let me try and draw it in white, which might be easier. What you can see is that the GST band sits roughly uh, between the 35 kilodalton band and the 25 kilodalton band, and so you can just estimate. You can call this 30 kilodaltons if you want, 29, it's, it's whatever. I, we know that the GST size is 27, so if you write 27, that's perfectly fine. But what you want to write is that it falls in between your 35 kilodalton band and your 25 kilodalton band. And an expected protein of 27 kilodaltons in size should f uh, migrate within that range. And so that, that's why we use a ladder, so that you can verify that your protein is, at, is the correct size and that there has been no degradation of your protein um, and that it's fully intact. Okay, so those are just the three questions. Um, they're pretty straightforward, but sometimes um, students who've never seen Westerns can be confused. So I wanted to use this video to help you. Um, so I hope it did. And this packet, remember, is due at our next lab when you'll come in for the uh, final practical. And as always, if you have any questions uh, regarding your Western blot or how to analyze it, just please um, don't hesitate to email me.